of Formula One hardware has given us 13 exciting races. But where are the strengths and weaknesses of the individual teams? We've weighed up the pros and cons of all 10 cars on the grid for 2022, from the Red Bull RB18 to the Williams FW44. Number 1, Red Bull. Positive, race day speed, consistency and reliability. In Verstappen's hands the RB18 is a devastating tool, fast on any type of track and has proven to respond very well to aerodynamic developments. Negative, the car was developed late, so it had a few reliability issues early in the season. It doesn't quite have the explosive qualifying pace of the Ferrari, and it took about a third of the season to equip it with the stronger front-end balance Verstappen needs to be at his best. Occasionally there are problems with the rear tire, such as in Austria. Number 2, Ferrari. Positive, the absolute fastest car of the season so far, as Charles Leclerc's spectacular number of pole positions proves. The chassis balance allows Leclerc to get the maximum out of it in a single qualifying lap, in this respect it has a better balance than the Red Bull. It's super strong under acceleration and generates a lot of downforce. Negative, Ferrari has made great strides with the power unit from 2021, taking advantage of the performance gains without having fully solved the reliability issues hence the string of grid penalties that are likely to increase. Front limited tracks also bring some vulnerability to overuse of the outside front tire. Number 3, Mercedes. Positive, it generates good downforce in high-speed corners and is quite competitive with Ferrari in this area, as long as the track is smooth. Despite its driving dynamics problems, it can still easily overtake the best in the midfield and is very good at handling tires during a race stint, better than Red Bull or Ferrari, though usually from too far back to matter. Negative, a very narrow setup window, even after the porpoising issues were tamed after Baku. Still copes very poorly with bumps and curbs. He is struggling to get the most out of the tires over a single lap, which is severely affecting his qualifying performance. Number 4, Alpine. Positive, it has proven that it is a solid aerodynamic platform that allows for consistent downforce improvement without throwing off the balance. It is quite good in a wide range of cornering speeds. The new split turbo engine also proved to be quite powerful, and although reliability was not perfect, it was better than Ferrari in this respect. Good tire utilization in the races. Negative, it still lacks ultimate downforce compared to the top three teams. Above all, the reliability of Alonso's car was poor. Number 5, McLaren. Positive, it seems to have good aero efficiency on low downforce tracks, much like its predecessor. It's more immune to porpoising than most. It's very good at dumping heat into the tires, which helps it in qualifying at tracks where that is a problem, and hiding its aerodynamically weak front end at places like Monaco. Negative, a generally weak front end, both under braking and on corner entry, especially in slow corners. Tire degradation during a race stint is not very good. High fuel consumption and old tires can make it look mediocre. Not easy to drive, so not consistent. Number 6, Alfa Romeo. Positive, a pretty versatile car capable of being the best of the rest in the contrasting demands of Miami and Barcelona. The Ferrari power unit gives a performance edge in the midfield. Originally, it has a weight advantage over its competitors. Negative. The Ferrari power unit also presents a reliability challenge. The team also lost a lot of track time through its practice sessions, which often affected the entire weekend. It added weight and development, while some others took it down. Number 7, Haas. Positive, the Ferrari power unit and good high-speed downforce performance can make this car the fastest in the midfield on occasion. Negative, it's less convincing in slow corners than fast ones, and there was virtually no performance development until Hungary, causing it to fall back a bit. Number 8, Alpha Tauri. Positive, the performance in slow corners is not bad. The mechanical grip gives it a chance to perform decently at tracks like Monaco and Baku. The Honda engine is powerful and reliable. Negative, the car is not as competitive aerodynamically as the cars of the last two seasons. It lacks downforce at high speeds, especially at the front, and it can be difficult to get it into the setup sweet spot. The lack of development leading up to France also contributed to him falling further and further down the grid. Number 9, Aston Martin. Positive, the car showed promise after its major upgrade in Spain. It was briefly a potentially poor Q3 qualifier, but operational issues masked that especially in Montreal. The new high downforce wing introduced in Hungary is very effective. Negative, the car in its original form severely lacked downforce and suffered badly from porpoising. It improved with the Red Bull-like upgrade, but since another upgrade at Silverstone, the team seems to have taken a wrong turn as it struggled to get out of Q1. Number 10, 
Williams. Positive, since the major aero upgrade at Silverstone, the team has shown better performance in the fast corners. In Austria, it qualified a full 1% faster than its previous average. It builds tire temperatures quickly, which helps it especially on wet or mixed tracks. Negative, the original concept with zero side pods didn't work. Downforce was lacking, balance was poor, and mechanical aspects posed additional limitations. The car's ride quality must now improve to take full advantage of the aero upgrade.